I switched to Boost Mobile and got a free Samsung Galaxy A23 5G phone. Want to know the best part? Uh, it was free? Nope. The fact that it's on America's largest 5G networks? Nope. It's the ding. Oh, yeah. Love the ding. Right? It's all about the ding. It's the dingarooski, the dingarona, the ring a ding ding. Unleash your power to save with Boost. Get a free Samsung Galaxy A23 5G phone when you switch. Boost Mobile. Unleash your power. And the ding. Limited time offer. New customers only. Available on select networks. 5G not available everywhere. One device per line. Tax excluded. Additional restrictions apply. See your local Boost Mobile store for details. You are now tuned in to the Prescription for Purpose podcast, the number one podcast for Christian women to learn how to apply God's principles to fulfill your God-ordained purpose. Every episode will empower you with the tools and wisdom necessary so you can strategically execute and excel in every area of your life. This is the place for you to learn how to walk in purpose, to walk with purpose, and to fulfill God's purpose. Hey sis, have you downloaded the Prescription for Purpose mobile app? It is the number one resource for women of faith who are looking to build their faith and walk in purpose. This is not your ordinary app. There are so many great features from Bible studies to devotionals, practical resources, study tools, and flashcards for every verse in the Bible so you can truly study God's word. You can even get your own devotionals, prayers, and Bible studies featured right on the app to share with everyone in the community. My favorite part of the app is the community. There's so many women who are a part of this app that are truly just in love with God and we want to build a life that is pleasing to him. So if you are looking to partner with us to pursue your purpose, head over to the Apple App Store or to the Google Play App Store and download the Prescription for Purpose app today for free. That's RX for Purpose. Hey sis, and welcome to another episode of the Prescription for Purpose podcast. I pray that y'all have had an amazing, amazing day so far. Welcome to the top of May. We're almost at the halfway point of the year, girl. But you know spring has sprung and so has the pollen, okay? Spring has sprung and so has the pollen. So y'all bear with me, okay? I don't know what's happening, but the pollen demon is out here coming for my life. And so when I sound like this, um, in this season and the season I mean, is not one in the spirit. It's one it's spring. When I sound like this and my voice crack and my noise, my, my noise, my nose is congested. Y'all just pray for me. Amen. Keep me lifted in prayer and just know I'm giving it all I got. Okay. What's the, the I'm doing the best I can with what I got. And what I got is allergic rhinitis. What I got is allergy induced asthma. What I got is congestion, post-nasal drip. And so y'all just pray for me when y'all hear me sounding like this. It's not COVID, sis, it's allergies, real bad. I got allergies real bad, okay? So I pray that everybody that is out here in these streets with these allergies, y'all do the things, okay? I don't, I'm, I was about to go into my, uh, this is environmental control, allergic rhinitis spiel, but I'm gonna save it. But y'all just do the things, Okay. So let's hop into today's topic, y'all. We are going to be talking about three strategies that you can implement in your life so that you can start building trust in your relationship with God. And I really got to this conversation first for myself because God had to show me that a lot of my angst was that I did not trust him. And I think it's kind of taboo sometimes for us to be like, God, I don't trust that you're going to do this. It We feel as if, we somehow are being disrespectful, but I personally am of the mindset, especially now that it's more disrespectful for me to show up and do, um, the, you know, the Christian checklist I'm praying, I'm fasting, but truthfully I'm doing nothing in the spirit because I don't trust God and my heart posture. The Bible talks about how God searches the heart. He knows girl. So it's, more offensive to not be authentic with God. There was a scripture in the Bible where a man was asking Jesus to heal his son and Jesus asked him if he believed and he said, help my unbelief. And so it's really important that we are authentic in our relationship with God. And so if you are struggling to trust God with your whole life or even any area of your life, I want to encourage you today to have that conversation with him and ask for his help. He's the only person that's going to be able to walk through that with you 
um, to really reassure you and touch areas of your heart that you may not even have words to articulate. Now, when you struggle with your with your trust in God, a lot of times it shows up in a couple different ways. Um, first is the fact that we don't really feel like we have a lot of progress in our relationship with God. And then second, it shows up in a lack of fruit in our lives. So you feel like you're doing all of the things, but you're not seeing the fruit for the amount of work that you feel like you're putting in. And it can really be exacerbated by stressful situations. But honestly, if we looked at most things in our life, we would either partially or completely see that a lot of our angst is rooted in mistrust. A lot of our angst is either partially or completely rooted in mistrust. So if you are dealing with worry or anxiety, then you are struggling because you don't trust that God is in control. I'm talking to me. Most things that I was pressed and worried about, I didn't believe wholeheartedly that God was going to take care of it. And so although I had prayed, I would still try to come up with a solution myself. And so then you find yourself feeling anxious about something. But if I've casted my cares, right, we talked about this in a previous episode I've done a while back about casting your cares. If I have truly casted my cares, then why am I still feeling this way? If you're lacking peace, it's because you are discontent and you are looking for more. Because you don't trust what God has given you. There's a sense of dis-ease, right? You don't feel content. And so you're constantly chasing and running after the next step. If you're struggling with making decisions, if you're being double-minded, girl, it's because you don't trust the instruction that God gave you and it doesn't make sense to you. And so instead of you just executing it, you're still coming back asking for more information. And so we have to truthfully evaluate ourselves and ask ourselves, do I really trust God? Do I really trust God with every part of me? And so I want you to do that self-evaluation. But more importantly, I want to give you some strategy that God had gave me and just some things that he's downloaded to me that I'm praying will help you. So Our foundational scripture that we're going to be talking about today, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, okay? The scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. Let me tell you, we be out here leaning and rock with it, okay? Like, lean with it, rock with it. I'm going to lean on my own understanding, and then I be rocking in my own understanding. And then when I look crazy, I come back to God. I know I'm not the only one, okay? We be leaning and rocking, as the songs say, in our own understanding. And so we have to really get to the root of it or we're going to continue to be in these repetitive cycles because the enemy is going to use this as a tool absolutely to exploit us and to get us out of relationship with God by our own doing, (laughs) like by our rebellion and our disobedience. And so we have to be mindful. So this word trust in the scripture, it means to rest on with all of one's weight. To trust implies that you're open to receive and respond to what is trusted. And as believers, we trust God by relying on his word and we need to be ready to receive from him and respond accordingly. A lot of times, We think we're ready to receive. We go with the intent to receive, but then our response be off. (laughs) Our response be off. So the reason that we struggle is because we have not put all of our weight, our W-E-I-G-H-T weight on God. And we also do not like to wait W-A-I-T on God. When he gives us instruction, when we receive something from him, when we receive a word from him, do we respond appropriately? If God says, here's something I'm trusting God for. I'm trusting God to expand my family. I've been on this journey a solid 24 months at this point. And there are a lot of days where it is hard 
it's emotional. However, I never stop operating like I don't believe the word that I got. God gave me the word. He said, this is going to happen. And I had to respond appropriately. I needed to start taking my health more seriously. I needed to make sure I got the, the doctors and the team in order. And even when the, the uh, setbacks happen, because I've had a, a couple, okay? Even when the setbacks occur, I have to still respond to the word that God gave and not respond to the circumstances around me. And our unwillingness to receive and respond is really what's keeping us in a position where we don't trust God. And there are many causes that can kind of be at the root of this mistrust. But if you identify with you not trusting God, we we are going to strategize. Okay, I want to help you because you're not alone. You're not defective. And God is here to help our unbelief. Okay, so let's hop into the first strategy. The first thing that you have to do is identify your motivation behind wanting to build a relationship with God. And I know that sounds crazy, but let's be for real. Everybody is not coming to God because they desire God. A lot of us either start out or have at some point found ourselves building a relationship with God as a means to an end and the end not being just because you love him and want salvation. There are way too many people out here who are only in a situationship with God. And if your motivation is to receive gifts or any specific outcome that is outside of pleasing God and being in his will, you will never be able to fully trust God. If you are building a relationship on false expectations and solely based on a reward system, you are not going to have the the heart posture, the motivation that is required to pursue God on the days, even when your flesh ain't feeling it. Because your flesh is always going to try to rebel against you. Hey sis, I want to tell you about our new Prescription for Purpose quiz. This quiz takes less than three minutes to complete and when you finish, you will receive your official purpose prescription. Your prescription will include information about your diagnoses and then you get free courses to help you take the necessary steps to start walking in purpose. The quiz is customized to help you in your current season. Do not spend another day without the clarity and instruction that that you need. Go right now to the link in the show notes, take the quiz and get your official purpose prescription today. Now let's get back to the show. So you really just need to ask God and yourself to, to show you your heart. If God doesn't do any of the things that you're praying for, would you still serve him? Do you love God for being God or are you only in this position and posture this way because you want a result. And if you don't get the result, you're going to pick up your ball and go home. That's the question, sis. That's the question. Stigmas around mental health were designed to hold us down, but we don't have to let them. If you're struggling, text or call 988 to connect with a trained crisis counselor who won't judge, just listen. 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Hope has a new number. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to identify your motivation for wanting to build a relationship with God. If you find that your motive is not pure, repent and get in position. There's a scripture in James, I believe it's 423. I could be wrong, but it's in James 4 that says that you pray and you don't receive because you have the wrong motives. I'm paraphrasing, but that's the word. If your if your motivation is off, you can forget it. You're not going to trust him because you're just here to get your stuff. The next strategy is that you need to build a space of transparent communication with God. I talked this, I talked about this a little bit ago that in order for you to build trust with God, your relationship has to be rooted in belief, hope, and transparency. And transparency and honesty are not the same thing. Can we talk about it? I don't just need you to be honest with me. I need you to be transparent. I need to be able to see through you because transparency is the ability to share and it allows others to see past what you're saying and to truly have an opportunity to see through you and to the root of whatever is going on. 
So for example, honesty is us saying, God, I want to believe you with my money. Um, but it's hard because I grew up poor. Transparency would be telling God that you struggle with trusting him with your finances because in your childhood, you perceived that the lack that your family, um, had, God could have intervened and he didn't. Like God, we were struggling. We were poor. This happened, that happened. And I know that you have the power to intervene and you didn't. And so it's hard for me to trust you in this area. How do I know you're going to come through now? Because you didn't come through then. That's transparency. It's getting to like, let's get to the heart of the matter. And when you submit that to God, he will not only heal your heart and speak to your concern, but then he'll give you proper perspective. And then you'll be able to trust him. So the first thing is that you have to identify your motivation behind building a relationship with God. You have to build a space of transparent communication with God. And then finally, we're going to call this T3. Testimonies, truth, time. The final strategy is a collection of testimony, truth, and time. We, a lot of times, come to God um, and we're quick to forget these situations where he's already delivered us, right? We don't, a lot of times, even acknowledge the fact that it was God who protected, provided, and piloted us until we got to the point to even give our life to him. And so I want you to take the time to look at every testimony in your life. I mean, girl, I did this one day and the amount of coverage that God has had on my life, it's, it's bananas. I wasn't even old enough. We went to the bank once with my mom and they have those little safety pops. They're supposed to be safe on the string. Brand new lollipop. The lady handed it to me before we pulled out of the bank parking lot. I was choking because it came clean off the stick. It just, it was not, it was defective. Clean off the stick. And I could have died. A whole lollipop stuck in my throat at four. Like, that's, that's wild. <laughs> that is wild. My dad has been to war and has come home. So we take a lot of these things that for granted, because when we're so busy focused on our current situation, we don't look at the totality of who God is and what he's done. You have to remind yourself of the goodness of God. David had to encourage himself. I challenge you to go back and look at everything that God has done in your life. That's why I had created um, the Check God's Resume Journal. Look at everything. Write it down. Check his references. I guarantee you, guarantee you, his track record is impeccable. He's never been defeated. The next thing is that you have to believe God at his word. His word is truth. And that's all we have. <laughs> if you don't believe the word of God, you got to go back to step one. Why are you here? <laughs> like, like, if you don't believe him, what are you, why, how are you serving and worshiping somebody and loving somebody and trying to build a relationship with somebody who you don't take him at his word? God's word is truth. And the Bible speaks even about God's inability to lie and that his word always produces and accomplishes what he pleases. Notice I said what he pleases and not what we please. Okay, that's why the first strategy is what it is. But when we have a minute of wavering in our trust, this is the time for us to identify that thought and then use God's truth to make it submit to Christ Jesus, to make it submit to what God said. This is 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. 
You have to make sure that you are not just accepting everything that pops into your head as truth. And you need to check it against the truth, the real truth. Not the counterfeit truth of the enemy. And then finally, time. Relationship takes time. Like relationship takes time. So you can't only talk to God a little bit on Sunday for five minutes through your pastor. Through the amens and think that you're going to have a relationship with him where y'all are able to um, communicate effectively And you're going to build trust in your relationship with him. You have to continue to be committed to spending time with God daily in order to grow a relationship with him. But these once a week, uh, 90 minute uh, pop up visits. That's not going to suffice. You're not going to trust God because you don't commune with him enough. So I'm a recap. Okay. The first strategy to build trust in your relationship with God is for you to identify your motivation for wanting to be in a relationship with him. The second strategy is that you need to build a space of transparent communication with God. This is not the time for fluffy, fluffy foo-foo. God, this is how I feel and this is why I feel this way. Or this is where I think this is coming from. Or help me identify why I feel this way. Transparency. And then the last one is our T3 strategy. Testimonies, truth, and time. You have to go back and look at the goodness that God has already given you in your life. You have to be able to stand on his word. And you have to spend time with him. So I pray that this really helps you in building the type of trust and relationship that you want to have with God. I pray that you really take this to heart. I know that this is simple, but that doesn't mean it's easy. Simplicity and ease are not the same. And I know that because God said that when we seek him and we draw close to him, he'll draw close to you. I guarantee and stand on the results. That if you wholeheartedly do this, I guarantee you that this is going to work. Not because I said it, but because he said it. I can only tell you that and and testify to you that, girl, I did this and yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I pray that you are encouraged. I pray that you do the necessary work to really build a relationship with God. I pray that God just gives you a a new sense of peace and hope and understanding and your ability to be able to be connected to him. He wants to be connected to us, y'all. He sent his son to die for us while we were yet sinners. So don't believe any lie that the enemy may try to plant in your head or in your heart about God not wanting to be in a relationship with you. Why would he send his son? He Genesis 3, he had already started the plan to be in relationship with us again. The Bible is just a love story of God letting us be in ratchet and God pursuing and providing access for us to be able to be in relationship with him again. So it's not that God doesn't want to speak to you. It's not that God doesn't love you. It's all of those things are lies. But what does have to take place is that you have to commit to being in a relationship with God and submitting to his leadership and his lordship. Because I can know you and not be in relationship with you. Okay, I know who Michelle Obama is. I am not in relationship with Michelle. I want to be. Hey, auntie. I love me some Michelle Obama. But I know who she is. But we're not in relationship. Because we don't spend time together. We don't commune. So it's not enough just to know that God exists. But you have to build relationship. And that takes work. Amen. So I love y'all, girl. Go do the things. I'm going to get me some Allegra, okay? And I will talk to y'all next week. 
This episode of the Prescription for Purpose podcast is brought to you by The Society. The Society is our online membership community for women who want to grow in both their faith and in their business. It's hosted by myself, Tatum Tamia of the Blessed and Bossed Up podcast, Kavaya Watrice of the She Who Is Called app, and Rosalyn Renee of the Therapy as a Christian podcast. This membership community literally has everything that you need. We do free challenges once a quarter. And our last challenge at the end of the year, people were getting saved. People were getting jobs, growing in their faith. I mean, it is just such a rich place to be. I absolutely love hosting the society because I get to teach Bible study every two weeks. Kavaya writes daily devotionals. We have prayer call every week. Tatum does business training and Rosalind makes sure that we are on our toes mentally and we're able to effectively be productive in every aspect of our life. I promise that you will not regret taking advantage of being a part of this community. Head on over to the blessed and bossed up society.com to start your free two week trial. That's blessed and bossed up society society.com to start your two week free trial today. Now let's get back to the show.